Welcome! Uh, welcome to the Wandering Wizards, not at all wandering, sitting in one damn place for 12 hours gaming marathon. Uh, we are still setting up, so we're going to be doing a lot of setting up kind of stuff for the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, then at noon, we're going to start playing when our first guest comes on. Um, we'll adjust in just a sec. Let's, so, uh, just so you know, we're going to be accepting... Uh, Donations to the Extra Life uh, wonderful uh, cause. Uh, they're supporting children. We're supporting Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Uh, they definitely need our help, especially in the midst of all that's going on. Uh, I'll introduce everybody shortly before we launch, so no, no worries about that. Um, please bear with us while we do the last few te technical things. Then I'll introduce uh, when our fourth team member gets here. Uh, we'll get them set up and we will start running. One thing to know is if you're watching now, uh, if you make a donation, let us know on Facebook. Uh, let us know on the Wandering Wizard page or on the event. And uh, there are several uh, stores available in uh, Midgard, which is the town on the verge of the crater where the event takes place. And you will unlock extra equipment for the PCs. And... The PCs are going to need all the help they can get. So uh, go ahead and, and uh, do that if you've got a couple of bucks to spare. Um, for ten, 10 or more bucks, you can unlock uh, one of the things. And we've already had the Enchanter uh, added to the town, which is going to add some excellent gear. But there's a lot of other stuff. I'll enumerate it in a bit. We're going to do a couple more setup things. So ignore all the, the, ch the setup chatter. Just know that's what we're doing. And... Welcome. We'll be with you shortly. So, Colt, yes. um, let's set up my phone to do the mini cam. Let's do it. Yes. All yeah. right, Cheers. folks. <laughs> it is very nearly noon, so I'm going to go ahead and while we uh, work on getting our first guest on board, I'm going to go around and introduce everybody. Uh, in theory, this will be available afterwards, right? This will. This will. This is all recorded. Yeah. It'll, it'll linger on your stream for people it'll that want to watch. <laughs> so, if you're not watching this live and you have anything resembling a good time, uh, the link will still be up for donation to, uh, for Extra Life. We're here to game, uh, but we're also here uh, literally for the kids. So regardless of when you're watching this, uh, please consider making a donation. So uh, first, we're gonna do this uh, in, in order of tenure. So uh, I'm of course first tenured in my own circle because it's me. Uh, I'm Mike Neistel. I go by the Wandering Wizard because right before isolation hit, I decided I was going to travel and run games and then immediately couldn't travel, making Wandering Wizard ironic and cruel. Uh, but I've now begun to travel again, which is great. Um, I am a longtime game designer. Uh, I'm a professional game master. I run um, games, uh, a lot of games for kids. Uh, through Deep Eddy Psychotherapy, I run what's called the Personal uh, Enrichment Adventures Program, and uh, I do some consulting, and I'm generally a kind of like third tier pundit, uh, GM, been around forever kind of guy. Uh, so second in tenure relative to me would be the person cosplaying as me, uh, my brother, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, on his own right, uh, is also a game designer. Uh, in fact, uh, I think I did the game design bit of it longer, but he has awards. So I, one could argue that Brian did it more successfully. Um, it's arguable. <laughs> he certainly it's played arguable. with me the longest. Uh, I think we need to readjust the camera <clears throat> to show... Oh, Colt was leaning back to, to, to Colt. So then next up in terms of tenure would be Emily Emily Breedlove. Uh, Emily, I have been performing with longer than gaming with, then gaming, uh, and, and has been a friend of mine for a very long time, took part in the over a year long, nearly two, uh, Dwarven Hold adventure. It was with two casts. a 20-level mega dungeon. Yeah. Was awesome. It was cuckoo crazy, and she will be playing our Haringbon uh, today. Yeah. And then next in terms of seniority uh, would be uh, Kit, um, Bloodgood. Uh, Kit is uh, a LARPer, a gamer, uh, an all-around wonderful person. 
and uh, I came into contact with Kit through LARPing, not through gaming, and then gaming. Uh, last, but definitely not least, is the uh, multifaceted um, Swiss Army knife that is that is Colt. Uh, it is the first time, it's ironic, because I've been now working with Colt for a year and a half. Uh, basically, yeah. my friendship with Colt is as old as the plague at this point. Yeah. And yet, I only met him physically today. <laughs> so that's like our life has existed uh, almost entirely through uh, through Zoom. Uh, he's been working with me on the uh, Nuked live cast, which is now on its second season. Uh, that's on Tuesdays. And is responsible for setting up a temporary studio oh, in my brother's apartment <laughs> which he did in one hour fucking flat it happened <laughs> somehow oh, my um all right so because we don't have our first guest which is fine because we've got a little bit of a delay getting everything started we can get him in like instantly too my bad on that also guys. just started. just so you know um oh we've got tech stuff um we're gonna eat so if you're expecting us to be professional enough to not be eating on camera, I, I sorry, not sorry. Uh, it's 12 hours and uh, we're not gonna, yeah, there's gonna be eating. So hopefully that's that's cool with y'all. So for starts. If and, it's not, I'm sorry, I haven't had breakfast yet. I'll get my mouth real close to the mic and do some ASMR eating oh, for you. <laughs> Um, also, the headphones are just for guests, so don't worry about doing that quite yet, unless you want okay. Let me see if I can manage the headphones with the ears. Oh, we don't we don't need it yet, so. Ooh, All right. I am testing. And so I'm going to send the four, the four players that I've introduced to you as players. Uh, everyone has Facebook up, right? Mm. Yes. Okay. I'm going to send you the intro. Uh, over Messenger, and I'm going to have you read this paragraph at a time. So Brian's going to read the first paragraph, then we'll go to Colt. We're going to go clockwise around. Um, read to camera as much as you can. Uh, this is so that people know what we're doing. <laughs> so. That, that's our camera. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. Key, key. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you know, the adventure we're about to play is called is Descent into the Depths of the Unknown Vault of the Horror of White Plume Mountain. Uh, if you are a uh, long of the tooth, white or blue hair sort of gamer, uh, you probably recognize a lot of the words in that very long name, and that was on purpose. So hopefully you will recognize other bits of what's to come, uh, which is, I'm hoping, profoundly nostalgic. So when he's ready, we'll begin to read the background with Brian and go around paragraph by paragraph. It turns out to be eight paragraphs, so it's perfect, and I planned that. We used to call the mountain Dragon Fang, even though the dragon that lived there had been killed ages ago. A star fell from the sky one cold night and struck the highest peak. Smoke poured from the crater it left for over 20 years, creating a white plume and changing its name. Once in a while, an adventuring party would trudge up there. Most didn't come back, but those who did had weird stories about talking doors, wands that could melt metal, and little plant people no bigger than halflings. Those who investigated the crater reported that the fallen star contained some kind of labyrinth structure containing many dangers and countless mysteries. This was enough to intrigue relic hunters. For decades, parties would make the journey and try their luck. So many made the journey that the town of Midgard was built halfway up specifically to cater to adventurers. Over time, enough of the strange metal found within the crater was recovered that blades and armor made of it are worn by the king's personal guard. The expeditions ended when a legendary mage known as Zerbrex Plainstrider met his end there. No one knows exactly what happened, but there was an explosion so massive that it toppled most of Midgard and sealed all known entrances to the Fallen Star. Eventually, relic hunters resumed their efforts, but there weren't as many, and they didn't come as often. Midgard was never fully rebuilt. They found new ways inside, but reported that the Fallen Star was haunted, 
and that many creatures from other dimensions had laired there. It was assumed that it was the spirit of Zebrex, driven mad by his death, using his powers to surround himself with horrors from other planes of existence. About ten years ago, the Fallen Star was sealed after an influential Duke's son unleashed a plague of storm rays that nearly destroyed a nearby port. It was decided that what lies in that crater was far too dangerous to allow anyone else to tamper with it. We all assumed that it would be the end of it. Mm-mm. About two months ago, Hellmouths began to open in the south, spewing legions of demonic soldiers. One by one, cities have begun to fall. The advisors to the king have determined that the only way to survive this onslaught is to seal the plane of existence entirely, which would close the Hellmouth. Unfortunately, the only way to do that is the talisman of a squared circle. The last known possessor of the talisman was Zerbrex Plainstrider. A call has gone out for a party to unseal the vault and enter what lies within. There is no telling what remains of the fallen star or what the Plainstrider has done to it. All anyone knows is that it will be unimaginably dangerous. And to be completely fair, it is, by definition, imaginably dangerous. And <laughs> I, I, broadly speaking, am the one who have imagined the dangers within. So, um, I mean, you wrote yeah, that. I get a little pedantic about that shit. Um, all right, so we're going to begin. We have another donation. Uh, the mag. Oh, hello, mag. Uh, that's uh, perfect. So that's been added. So it sounds like between all of that, we have another donation from Tyler Rice. So that oh, honestly, that's going to be everything. <laughs> yeah, so, we get everything. We get Yay. everything. <laughs> you've you've done it, and I think how far are we towards our goal, Colt? Thanks, chat. Um, let's look at total goal. We are currently at five hundred and sixty-five out of a thousand dollars already, and we haven't even started the campaign yet. <laughs> Holy it's shit! It's well done. It's All good. right. Um, who in this group is? I see five eighty. We have a rogue. Oh, good. And we have a greedy, greedy dwarf. So which of you is going to be the keeping track of stuff person? <laughs> Brian, because Colt has to deal with do the internet. Thing. Thank you, Brian. So, <laughs> sure. Just have a note page order. or something. I feel you. Um, sure. Uh, and since you you stood up, uh, you obviously volunteered. <laughs> okay. <again>. Sure. <laughs> is this, should this be in character or should this be a third Let's person? Let's do an auto character, character this character is. Okay, sweet. Um, what's up, y'all? I'm playing Benny Gex. Um, that is a 100 Gex reference for those who get that. Um, I am a 18 year <laughs> It's like loud, obnoxious kid music. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I'm an old wizard. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think Colt's very aware of how much younger he is than the rest of the people at the table. Um, I am playing Vinny Gex. I am a male lizard folk rogue um, coming in at level 8. Um, I guess I don't really have a... How would I be... Describing myself here, Mike. What's the best way to do this? Just uh, like just who uh, I am. Uh, uh, race, profession, like how you're dressed. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Like just what? What are you? Somebody walking up to you. What are they seeing? Fantastic. Well, I am wearing kind of like uh, ratty leathers, um, like with a cloak kind of over it, kind of tattered all the way through. Definitely been on the road for a while. Um, not the the cleanest dude. Um, I my background is a bounty hunter, so I've been rolling around with shady folks for a while um i'm a young lizard folk so i'm not still fully grown um that's pretty much it i have a crossbow and i do a lot of poison stuff that's kind of my thing yeah <laughs> okay so we'll go around um i'm playing playing Gleemimzy banya uh female harrington barbarian also level eight uh i am kind of dressed in Medium-ish to light to medium armor. Um, very energetic and looking very determined, and has a positive energy about her. Um, me, like she's made of springs, uh, as would be um, uh, appropriate for for a part fey bunny type person. Uh, she has. Let's see. Let me see what she has in her hands. Um, let's see the things. As are oh, um, I believe I have a, 
a sword, a big old sword, and a couple of smaller swords. So I can, no, a couple of hand axes. I think I just want to oh, sweet. The exact yes. gear may change as you yeah. piece your gear. Yeah, but you know, to 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 do the fighty throwy things and the and the melee, and she's just very bouncy, and also a little maybe some scars already. So a little, a little uh, ready, a little like a, a loved toy, a little fur. Right? Yeah, and some earrings on the ears. You know. Cool. And next. Hello, I am playing. Gwil Willith Nauthian, who is a wood elf cleric of Connell. Lightish, dirty brown hair, hazel eyes, wears chainmail, has sword and mace and bow, because why the hell not? Basically, she is here to keep everyone alive for as long as she can. I can get behind that. I want to be alive for as long as possible. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of me, ba -ba -ba -bum. Grundir, uh, Grundir Stonewise to his family Grundir. and his mother when he's calling him out because he's been bad. Uh, Grundir, Grundir is a dwarf wizard. Um, thank you. <laughs> Not sure what that was. He's a. Uh, <laughs> He was born amongst the mountain dwarves, who are not renowned for their wizardry, but rather for their strength and craft and steel. But he was always, uh, his mind was always wandering to studies and, and, and magic and history. And he eventually left the mountains to live with the uh, hill dwarves and, and learn amongst the wizards he could find there. Uh, and he has become a, a wizard of the Order of the Scribes. So uh, he has a very prominent tome that he carries always with him in his arms because it's not just a spell book, it's also his friend. It has a mind of its own. Uh, he, it has been imbued with sentience through his studies. Um, and it, it has been crafted by his own hand to not only be a, a magic book, but also serve as a shield in battle. That's awesome. So he closes the cover and he whips out his war hammer and he also wears plate mail, uh, except of course for his stylish wizard hat. So it's 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 uh, uh, very a very I strikes a very uh, uh, unusual profile of a plate mail dwarf, but he is indeed a wizard, and uh, he also tends to be a little bit of an absent-minded professor. He's he's not terrifically perceptive, and he's usually more interested in moss scoring on the wall or the particular carvings and something, and not so much about maybe there's a monster. So you know, make sure to pull his his tug his robe if he needs to pay attention to something. So given all of that, uh, with Brian in the lead, let's go ahead and assign your extra, very generous, thank you, Internet, uh, uh, initial magic item equipment. All right, let me introduce our first guest. Uh, this uh, gentleman is Todd Stashwick. Uh, Todd is uh, actor, voice actor, uh, uh, game celebrity of note, uh, magnificent human being, Entirely too handsome for his own good. Um, and if you could mash him down and trip him away as liquid sexy, I think it would be incredibly well selling. Uh, <laughs> that and everyone rides a horse, right? Uh, all right, all right. So uh, he'll be portraying uh, Maddox, who will be introduced to uh, shortly. So uh, let's. Go ahead, can you, is the camera for the miniatures currently working? Uh, yes, Cold. Wait, you want me let's, to replace you with it? Let's go ahead and replace me with it. My, uh, I know people will be sad not to see my, my aging visage, but um, there we go. There we go. All right, so uh, I'm going to make uh, Kit the official moving arounder Mover arounder of these minis. Yes, both. So, uh, for Todd's information, and you will indicate this by wiggling the miniature, please. We have Gax, who is our lizard man rogue. Which I think is this one. Maybe hold yeah. it up a little closer to the camera if possible. That's me. Is this you? That's Gax. Yeah, is Maddox Gax? has like a plague mask on. All right, so please hold the, the lizard man closer to the camera. Like, show him off. 
All right. And Gimimzi is really easy to pick up because that is the uh, the the bunny person, the Heregnon, uh, with somehow 19 strength, which is bizarre but cool, and I'm, I'm here for it. And Grundir, the wizard dwarf. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, Todd, this is my brother Brian, who is cosplaying as me today. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Glyph is our, uh, did you settle on Elvin? Yes. This is our Wood Elf uh, cleric. And last, we have not described, is Maddox. Uh, Maddox uh, arrives at, at Midgard with the others of you. And so the, the four of you are heroes of the realm. Maddox uh, is someone who staggered out from the crater uh, after having gone in with the last group of heroes to attempt it. Uh, Maddox was literally all of their equipment was kind of half melted. They were steaming. He <laughs> <laughs> almost got me. Um, so when, but he has been, they have been um, wandering the land trying to regain themselves. This character, for the case, sake of the audience knowing, um, has multiple personalities. So from time to time, we'll drift in and out of personalities. Uh, you, you'll no most noticeably realize this when we change guests, and, and Maddox will suddenly act very, very differently. That's because it is Doctor Who Maddox, style. Yeah, totally. Well, Maddox is actually an amalgam of all the characters that died in oh. a massive... Uh, multiplanar explosion. Cool. So Maddox is <laughs> his entire adventuring party. Uh, so dresses in, can we hold up Maddox's figure and wiggle him for the camera? He's the one with the plague mask on. Gotcha. All right, and so, the fancy uh, electric. He's got a little electric. Yeah, he's got uh, some spell abilities. He's basically he's got, got a, a, little, a little ability from most of the classes. Uh, he's got a little electric. You have no ability to like just show documents, right? Uh, just <laughs> all that electronic. Business. Listen, man, this is uh, this is not how this is supposed to work. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. Hey, man, you've got, you've got the studio set up. We're all we've we've got a guest at the end of the table. I think this is a magnificent accomplishment. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> but but yeah, fucking janky, man. We'll, all right, cool. We'll, we'll make it better for next. So year. the five of you uh, have gone. Uh, all right, so you meet at the Ram's Head Tavern which is in, uh, and I'm not sure if you heard the intro or read it when I sent it to you, Todd, but basically the adventure, which is the descent to the depths of the unknown vault of the horror of White Plume Mountain. Uh, there effectively was, uh, spoiler, a spaceship that uh, crashed into the Oh, that is a spoiler. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's because you're a tiny bearded baby that doesn't know what White Plume Mountain is. Uh, gotcha. well, those of us that have beards like Todd and I, we know what White White Blue Mountain is, and we know that there's a spaceship in it. Uh, so it hits the mountain, and it's smoked and steamed. And uh, there's been adventures in there ever since. Raiders would go in looking for amazing gear. Uh, and eventually, uh, a fellow called the Plane Strider went in. His party died. And there's now, it, it's considered haunted. So in addition to being otherworldly th stuff in terms of from the, the above, it is from other planes as well. Okay, cool. Uh, so are you handling this cult? So we're seeing Todd like this, but the stream is seeing stream the is mixed seeing bag? this. We you're you're a wizard, Todd. Harry. Thank you. All right. <laughs> it's coming together. Uh, Sorry, Todd. There's a lot going on on this side that you're not privy to. But. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're, we're going to roll uh, click-clack dice. You're free to use beyond, but we're, we're using physical dice over here. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. So uh, you have met up in Midgard, which is what remains of the town that was set up uh, for adventurers to go into this into this crater. And uh, oh, the nice. inn there is called the Ramshead. And there's a gentleman there named Sir Edmund of Pharaoh. Edmund of Pharaoh is coordinating this expedition, making sure that you get to where you're going and get inside. So he meets with you in the hall. Very few people uh, live anywhere near the crater these days. It was closed off uh, quite a while ago uh, when a duke's son, a wannabe adventurer, was was killed. Mm. Edmund says, welcome, welcome all of you. Uh, very brave of you to uh, go where very few, uh, these days anyway, very few dare to tread. 
Uh, as you know, uh, Zerberek's plane strider uh, was with one of the, with the last expedition to go within, which is why we've asked Maddox here to join you. Uh, according to our information, uh, this this Zerberix person uh, had an item called the Squared Circle, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but hell mouths have begun to open, spewing legions of demonic soldiers. Uh, we hope, uh, advisors to the king, hope to use the squared circle to shutter uh, travel between worlds, close down, lock those those mouths, prevent uh, arrival of any more enemy forces. But for us to do that, you need to go into this sealed dungeon and find uh, either the remains of the plane strider or where the relic has gone. We understand that relics are exceeding difficult to destroy. So we are confident it, it still lies somewhere within the crater. Is this like a in character this is in character. Is this like a like a hypothetical item or is this like a idea or like what are we <laughs> what are we looking for? Well here? Our, our lore masters tell us that it exists. Uh, we also know some who knew the plane strider and know that he has worn it. And uh, it is an animal similar to the legendary Amulet of the Plains, except it allows through attunement and, and uh, affiliation, association with the planar uh, rules themselves is a, a relic far greater than even that amulet. So it is hope the item is not theoretical. It is an actual thing, a known thing. Okay. This application is a supposition. You good, Benix? I are we? Uh, uh, are you asking me to go back into the crater? I'm, I'm afraid we are. Yes, we're hoping. We know that you don't. Right, then I'm going much. to need a large glass of water with a whiskey back. Uh, he waves, and the innkeeper runs over. Drama, if you have it, the good goblin kind with with the blood in it. So I'd like thanks. Yeah. The, the, uh, the barkeep winces a little. <laughs> I might have some under the eye. Just a moment. And he heads over. Uh, we know it's us. You know what? Cancel the, the water. And cancel and the water. Just, <laughs> he, he literally moves the pitcher of water aside, just sort of nods as if to say, I guess as much. No, and heads, no, I'll, heads I'll over take the water. Thank you. Puts the, the water in front of the elf. Uh, we know it's asking a lot, but. And we, we know from talking to you that you don't remember, and this is partially to the player, uh, Maddox doesn't remember a lot uh, because his brain is uh, like a, a child's you know, uh, like, sand bucket you know, like full of broken you, when, glass. When you smash a bug on your hand and then you look at the viscera, yeah, that's the inside of a noggin right now. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, if there's mm. any chance that you'll remember anything useful, we do need to ask you. It could save hundreds, untold hundreds of lives. Uh, I, I, I lost my old party. I you think. don't like you don't like have the the thing with you, right? Like it'd be a huge waste of time if Did you forget it. <laughs> I just immediately to make sure that we don't have, like, the problem from, like, Clapper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad they didn't go that way. It's not, like, in your pocket. It's so not dramatics. ruby slippers. They're with me all the time. Um, That's fair. All right, Max. No. That's your case. That's my bad. No. So we will pull the camera yeah, back. Be coming. And, uh, <laughs> we, the party leaves the, the ram's head. Uh, I will assume that they will hand in Maddox... A, uh, hey, could you put that to go? To go. Uh, to go. <laughs> <laughs> he has he a just durable pulled, vessel. Pull the bottle into my horn. And he, he, he picks up a drinking horn and he pops it. And he's like, just top it off. Yeah. Uh, don't, Thanks. don't. Uh, I wouldn't drink this too close to children or uh, pregnant women. Emotionally? No, I, I, I think I'm he might. Pregnant. It's very powerful. Oh, absolutely not. Physically close. Fair enough. Physically. Oh, right, right, right. Ain't gonna last that long, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so we see the party the head down a stair yes. that goes down the crater. 
So it's uh, kind of like the steer you get in a mine. So it's been driven into the side. It's kind of uneven wooden stairs. Uh, and basically what you're looking at is effectively a meteor collided with the mountain, made a crater. So it's kind of like a crater with a big bump in it. And there's a lot of places in it that there are scars and holes like caves. Mm. And Edmund says yeah. a lot of those at one point were entrances into this, this dungeon. Um, at one time, we referred to this as, let me use proper nouns. I mean, this mountain is called Dragon Fang. Um, it had a name, which is probably important, which is why I'm wasting time coming up with it. Uh, we refer to it sometimes. I call as... it Donna. <laughs> oh, we 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 know Maddox. Thanks, uh, Maddox. We recall that the fallen star, though. Fallen I, star. Donna is probably it. Looking at it with my own eyes, <laughs> she's a fallen star. <laughs> well, you made it sad now. Uh, and well, the, it always the group... was, mate. It always was. <laughs> <laughs> the group heads down around the outside, and there's a platform uh, down about uh, eighty feet. And then it's, it goes right up to the edge of that, which they call the Fallen Star. And there's an area that's been physically sealed. So it's kind of bricked off. And there's literally a big wax sign uh, seal applied by a representative of the king, which is very strange in this context because it's like Casco Modigliano against the side of a meteor with like a 40K like wax seal on it. But it's very clear because it's got the crown, what the seal means is probably why they did it, which is King says, don't go here. Probably treasonous and all kinds of bad repercussions for breaking this seal, which the knight immediately does. He takes out his dagger and pops the seal off. Uh, there are workers with him uh, and they begin tearing down the wall. Uh, he says, uh, Sister, uh, do you think maybe a prayer to the gods before entering? <laughs> uh, could you give us a non-Catholic prayer? I remember <laughs> uh, She performs, being a cleric, performs a short ritual. They pull the wall down and back, and you're looking at a 20-foot uh, passage the walls of the passage are, a, are of a strange metal with a bluish, bluish tinge to it, kind of like blued steel. Mm. Uh, very odd. Uh, I'm now going to need, this will be the jankiest part of our broadcast. Uh, I'm going to need you to physically hand me my, my iPhone to point at my screen. No one will like they did in days of old. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look away, look away, look away. Yawn, yawn iPhone. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> can you see? Because I can't see. Can you uh, no, see my still screen? Still up a tab. Oh, yeah. what to avoid retilting. Uh, this is fine. Everything's fine. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, and if we can't see it here, the players can't see it. I'll fix that. There we go. We're going to have to learn how to do this a little more gracefully somehow. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Why? That, that, was, is... that was melted butter. <laughs> Thanks, Maddox. <laughs> oh my God! Um, so you're you looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at roughly this. Uh, so we're now going to need, and this is where it gets extra funny, Janky. Put this back so I can get marching order, please. Look at this. <laughs> oh, this was all supposed to be electronic. We uh, electronic. Yeah, oh, no, no, don't. it's not steam powered. <laughs> I'd love a guy on a bike, like like running the thing in the, <laughs> or like uh, a squirrel right. who looks at the camera and goes, "I hate this job." <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, guess yeah I, I dropped some Flintstones. Yeah, yeah. By yeah, new I, CST. <laughs> All right. I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay, so the Harangon is going to go first. Uh, what's what's? Just go ahead and give me a marching order. Make sure it's visible to the camera so they know what you're doing. I feel like probably I kind of want to be in the back because I if if something happens and I need to like slip away and like follow someone Maddox or do something, that's probably the best place for me to be. Maddox is facing the other direction. 
Yeah. <laughs> doesn't realize what you're all point. doing. He's he's saying, Donna, be gentle. <laughs> Maddox is uh, back. Let's engage. We're going to call this um, be Procedure Alpha. Can you alpha me? Procedure Alpha. Please hand me my damn iPhone. Oh, you're alpha. 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 You know, a camel is a horse designed by a committee. There's another one of those on the floor to your, to your right. I can get you a very right. long cable. So can we see the, the map now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can see, we'll see your key keyboard. There we go. All right. Hello, there is map. Well, if you're adjusting it, I'm adjusting. Okay, I'll let you adjust. Yeah, you have good. more control. So as long as the players can now all get a brief look at this, uh, I'm not going to be able to reach and, and, okay. Yes. And audience can see that everybody's taking at least a glimpse, right? Okay, so uh, where is the potential plug-in? To your right on the floor. So if you plug that in while I give the... Today's view is brought to you briefly by Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. Work your magic. It's already got a cable in it. It's just, you just have to pick the cable. Oh, if it's so, the same kind of cable. Uh, you had into I, the past. I believe I've stumbled into a Christopher Guest film. <laughs> I don't think it is. Um, I don't think it is. It's USB C. Okay. So you see, <laughs> as you go down the, as you go down the tunnel, there are actually it's sections. USB C. Yeah, it's an iPhone. It's an iPhone, and this is. <laughs> there are sections of the tunnel. <laughs> there are sections of the tunnel that are the strange battle. I just want to know yes. what viewer retention we have right now. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> is it. Is it is it one? No, it's, it's it, double it's digits. Actual, it's double like digits. Table game. This is like a legit <laughs> table game. <laughs> well, that's what we. Which is such great effort. I mean, it was it was far too smooth when we started. This, this is curated. <laughs> I love it. Um, so you would see that the uh, the the strange metal is in sections. And that most of the uh, tunnel is made of rough hewn stone. Um, it's, it looks like, and Edmund is your head in because he's not going to go with you. He will tell you that, like a lot of this place, that metal was pulled out. So okay. a lot of it was repurposed into weapons and armor for the King's Guard. So it was, people have been greyhawking this place for a long, long time. So the, the map you showed us, it, yeah. are those smooth walls or? They are. Oh, okay, cool. uh, but they are. But part of them are faced. With that metal, and behind them is that is the stone. I see. Uh, all right. Tunnel goes back 40 feet, opens into a large dome chamber made of what looks to be melted stone. Uh, there's a 15-foot platform at the back of the chamber, a broad stair leading up to it, flanked by iron braziers. On top of the platform is a large set of double doors, which can also seem to be made of iron. There are rings to open them, but no visible lock. There's a table next to the doors. What do you and the do? doors are behind the. Yes, the doors are up on the platform. Okay, okay so the, the stairs lead up to the double doors with the rings on them. And then thank you for finally telling me how to pronounce Brazier. Um, <laughs> uh, it doesn't read that way. Um, Indeed. So. Uh, I mean, if you're French, and, and it's I, Brazier. I think Americans just call them bras. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, uh, in what order? Am, am I like second or third here? I turn around finally. You're, to you're look second. At the braziers. Okay, great. Do it's I? Do fairly, I? Does any of this feel familiar to me? So, in general, it will all feel a little familiar, but with no specific detail. It's all a little trauma triggering. Uh, if you have useful flashes of information, I will let you know. Cool. Thanks. So who is going up the stairs first? It looks like Maddox and uh We Z. We Z, right? Yeah, I'll I'll do it. Okay, once well, once you good. put your feet on the staircase, uh the two braziers burst into light. Uh they are magical flames, they are blue, they're clearly not burning fuel. Like they're obviously magic. In fact, as you walk up the stairs and you look down, it's a ball of magical flames burning up. So it's not natural. Like, it's not causing a fire source. 
it's a obvious light source. Ooh. I'm gonna check for traps. Uh, I'll help with that. Yeah. So go ahead and give me a d20 roll. Me as well, or just just him? Uh, are you also checking? Yes, I'm also checking. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, and do I add anything, or just a straight d20? So on your sheet, uh, oh, plus uh, perception. Medics, Medox so be- gets a plus four to everything, and he effectively has yeah, all. So skills. that is a that's a that's a dirty twenty one. That's a yep. dirty twenty three from me, Maddox. <laughs> I meant dirty twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> so the party, the the two of them, are are very aware of the stairs and proceeding with some caution. You are really fucking sure there's no trap. It's awesome. With those two rolls, you're like. If there's a trap, it should kill us because it deserves it. Hey um, guys, these uh, these stairs seem pretty cool. Maddox doesn't seem to be tripping out either right now, so I think we're good. Oh, good, thank you. Uh, you uh, Donna's Maddox? taking care of us. And when you get to thank the top, you, Donna. you see there is a thank scroll you, lying on the uh, the little table. Ooh, is Ooh. it open or is it rolled up? It is rolled up and tied with a uh, silk cord. Seems to be your area. I was of half asleep until I heard the word scroll. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, the whole party is up the stairs and on the platform. Yeah, his true. nose was in his spell yeah. book until he smelled scroll, and now he <laughs> smelled scroll. Is that what you said? <laughs> I smell scroll. Very good. Okay, Brian. I have just in Facebook sent you the text of the scroll. You may it's read most old that. and possibilities. Aloud, please. You will unscroll, unfurl, and read. <clears throat> it, it says this in a very clean handwriting. I yet live, but this new life I have become something other than what I was. I cannot die, so I will spend eternity contemplating the infinite and dancing with the shadows. Stay well clear of this place. That was the doom of my life that was. As the plain strider, your lives would have mattered to me. As I am now, this gate and this warning are the last of my consideration for mortal affairs. All that awaits you is madness and death. Oh, well, should I read I, on? I, yes, I may have written please. that. <laughs> can we? Is that something we can like compare handwriting on? Is there a compare handwriting yeah. check? I mean, you could give him <laughs> up a uh, scroll. I'm not, it's a I'm not convinced I didn't write it. Uh, I guess I'll continue. You should turn back. But if you have come here, you are doubtless the sort of persons who would not. So at least what remains of my conscience is clear when you ignore my counsel. The dangers within will destroy you before we could meet, so I will wish you well. That's nice. I wish I could say that I will mourn you, but I am beyond such things now. Beware the bell. When you hear the bell, your end is near. Could you make sure it isn't my silver car that's beating? Beeping. Beware the bell. I guess that's the. If the it table is, table. just hit the. the Beware line. the bell. The bell. Oh. Ding ding bell. Okay. And that's it. For whom does the bell toll? I, will, it I produce a the... magic quill because that's a Did thing that, that we do. Yeah. Does it say Maddox? No the <laughs> okay. And I will offer Maddox the opportunity to, to just write something and see if his his penmanship so matches. I'm going to say, based on uh, Todd's reaction, mm-hmm. that Maddox reaches into a side satchel, pulls out a length of parchment and a quill, and he's written Maddox, but it's in many handwritings. And you seem to recall your mind slips sometimes and that your handwriting varies when that happens. So every you that exists signs differently. And none of the like the Maddox signatures matches this writing at all. Gotcha. So it's not it's not Maddox. Unless there's someone else in here that I haven't met yet. <laughs> I didn't write that, mate. I am willing to bet that this is Zerbrex. That's that's a good idea to me. I don't know. It says plain strider right there. It's a good point. Well, we're on the material plane, and I stride, so that's why I wondered. <laughs> good point. Thanks. Can I check out this door? Yes. And, uh, Let's go. All the way back from the, the tunnel going in, you hear the knight say, I'll leave you to it, then. 
Uh, the, the You're not going to come? The, oh, no, I'm going to protect your uh, your rear. Yeah, you could just put up the sign again. No one will come through, man. I have been Somehow I doubt charged that. with watching the gate. Thank you. We don't want the back door open. That's that's a valuable service. Excellent. And he goes back to really not going into though, the dungeon. He? <laughs> He's super pleased with not going to the dungeon. So, uh, Gex, yes. uh, they do not look lockable. Okay. Like, they look like they're just big, kind of like on some cathedrals. Like, they're not doors of the lock, like an inter- interior door. They're just doors. Okay. So you're pretty sure they look heavy. So it depends on how well they're hung, how hard they'll be to open. But they look like iron, like wrought iron gates, doors. All right. Do you think we should go inside or is there stuff we should check out here still? Or what do y'all feel? Let's feeling? just go for it. Well, it sounds like the crunchy stuff's inside. All right. Yes. All right. May I have maneuver alpha, please? Maneuver Alpha activated. Da, 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 da. You know, it'd be amazing if one day they could invent a thing where we can do this with computers. Computers. Uh, or right, get another so... camera. <laughs> there We've you go. tried. There's, there's not enough holes on my computer to plug into at this point. Boy, you're That's stuck. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, you're not pushing yes. hard enough, man. Uh, so the doors swing open. Uh, fortunately, the, the Haragnon is very strong. Yeah! Despite the bunny appearance, it's very mighty. Uh, the doors don't take all of your 19 strength, but they're, because uh, they are they are well hung. Sorry. Uh, but meaning, if they were misaligned, you'd be just pulling all that weight. If properly mounted, still bad. Uh, you can pull them open, and you do. I start, I start so, pushing first. This goes back. Ugh. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, oh, easier. So there is a more tunnel, very similar to the entrance tunnel. But after about 20 feet, there is a strange silvery mist. A Narcana roll from the dwarf, please. Oh, I have knowledge of things, Arcane. Let's take a look at the dice. Why, that would be a 22. Those Ooh. may be the mists of the ether. The mists of the ether. I what say that like I know what it anymore? is. Sorry? Nothing. What, and, and that is... The either or. Yes. Oh. Inspiration. <laughs> I will take at this point... Now, you have no way... <laughs> uh, uh, Colt, you have no way to ah. show the, the slide that I made, right? Uh, if you send it to me, I can. Okay, I sent you the inspiration slide earlier. Uh, okay, yes. Maybe Maddox goes know. forging for LaCroix. <laughs> there must be one in this dungeon somewhere. So, to those of you who are watching, um, who inquired about inspiration, uh, if you uh, throw down five or more bucks towards extra life, uh, it's the top one, not the bottom one. Uh, yeah, we're not using the danger deck. That one. Um, let me know when that's up. So we have uh, these lovely, uh, we have some stickers and uh, hearts. And if you wish, you may donate five or more dollars uh, and choose one of the PCs. They will be uh, assigned a sticker, which will give them the ability to use inspiration. Inspiration can reroll anything, saving throws, damage rolls, anything. You can, a player can get as many as you like. In fact, I think a fun game would be, can we cover any of our players uh, in post-its? Um, <laughs> the only limitation to these things is a, a roll may only be re-rolled once. So you can't re-roll, re-roll, re-roll because then the underlying game becomes pointless. Uh, the GM can also be inspired. Uh, personally, I prefer dark wave music for that. Uh, but if you do it through this system, if you uh, donate 10 or more dollars, uh, you can assign inspiration to me. Inspiration assigned to me is used to cause trouble for the players. Uh, anyone who's watched my Savage Moon stream knows what forms that can take. Uh, 
extra badness <laughs> happening, rolls being forced to be rolled, uh, uh, reinforcements arriving for enemies. Those are all examples. So if you are an angel, uh, donate to add inspiration to players. If you are a devil, add them to me, and I promise to make good use of the meanness. All right, let's go back to the stream. And make sure to mention uh, on the Twitch stream, if you're watching, uh, that you've done this so we know to assign the points. Yes. All right. So uh, so the mists of the ether are mists which border the ethereal plane. So potentially that means walking into those mists will walk you into the ethereal plane. Now, you don't know much about the interior of this place. Uh, you were told it was a labyrinthine dungeon. This is something else. Unfortunately, no one's been in here until the plane strider went mad. In theory, he died, but the note indicates otherwise. Um, the thought was everybody but the plane strider had been... <laughs> Maddox came out. He was the rest of the group. And the plane strider's uh, unquiet soul was somewhere in here. So you are faced now with ethereal mists. What do you do? Um, you got anything cheap we could throw through this and see what happens? Can I can I uh, can I reach into my memories uh, and see if I can suss out any info? This is pretty sure something that happened after you left. This, unlike uh, the outer room, is not very familiar to you. Fair enough. It is. Thank it you. Is pass, it is passing strange. Oh, I would like to use my magic awareness as an action. I can open my awareness to the presence of concentrated magic until the end of my next turn. I know the location of any spell or magic item. Oh, uh, ready? When I sense a spell, ready? I know what school. Yes. It's right there. That mist. Yes, that's magic. That's magic. It's yeah. magic. But I know what school of magic it it belongs. I to. never do that because they don't mean anything to me. The schools that the D and D staff chose that's are wacky and mismatched and never. I mean, okay, enchantments an enchanted thing. They're. I mean, I prefer the kind of older traditional. Like, is it elemental? Is it enchantment? Is it healing? It's like the ones that just abjuration. Yeah. It, like. It's a magic mist. Well, so so in your in your world, master. Um, <laughs> oh, nice! I, I like the implied criticism question with the respect, so I don't get salty. <laughs> Skillfully done, Emily. She, we are acquainted. <laughs> uh, what I know then, just kind of with that ability, would I have any cessation of what this might do? Two well, you and the dwarf know it is very likely a pla a planar the, trap. Yeah. Like well, under normal circumstances, I would advise against bounding into the mists of the ethereal, but so given the nature of this place, I okay. think we should bound on in. Worse for me, because man. it more likely more likely than not is the only way forward. So as soon as that, that passes like, his lips, I bound in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and being be hard on you kind yes. of jump, oh. right? Okay. <laughs> Does she explode into a fine red mist? <laughs> no, she does not. I am uh, going to get some rope out of my pack. Okay. And so start a, as the elf waist. pulls out the rope, the hard dot is already gone into the mist. I see the rope, decide it's not for me, and go through. Ancestors! So the first 10 or 20 feet, it's just like she walked into mist. But then she kind of disappears. So it's like the movie The Fog. Oh. Like there's a point where. They're just, they disappear into the fog, right? Um, so you're basically tying yourself to the dwarf. The the lizard person looks at the rabbit, looks at the rope and goes, and then just walks into the mist. Exactly. Come on, let's go. So the two of you walk in like click clacks? Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Come on, Maddox. Is Maddox going to be uh, roped in or are you going to just walk in? He's walking in. Okay. Um, Am I the only one who's paranoid? The first person the in is, uh, Gimimzi, you pass through the mists and you end up in a place where uh, the visibility of the mists opens. It's still misty, but you can see. Like for a minute, it was very close, like a uh, terrestrial mist, like you couldn't see very far. But as you pass into it, that changes the point where there's just kind of an awareness of mists. 
But instead of being able to see shorter, you can see much farther. And you see a place of strange lights, darkness, and gray glowing mist. Uh, the first unsettling thing is there's no ground. So you're still standing, but when you look down, there's no there's no floor. Oh, like Wiley Coyote style. <laughs> a little, yeah. Uh, Gex enters directly after you, and uh, you see the the bunny looking down at her. You, you got? Do you have big bunny feet, or is that racist? I have big bunny feet. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. Sometimes you got to clarify. <laughs> and apparently the carrot thing is... Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a commitment. So Damn. you also oh, look down. She has Gallagher-level props. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring out the sledgehammer. Did you mean that as an insult or a, or, or a compliment? Oh. <laughs> yeah, because Gallagher yeah. is... <laughs> no, I'm not smashing it. And then uh, Saying, Maddox. Anytime you bring foliage into your act, <laughs> it's, you are it's summoning an Gallagher. You're summoning the Gallagher. So now Maddox and uh, Gex and Gimimzi are standing together in the massive expanse of the ether. What do you do? Do you wait for the others? or? I guess the question I have is, is this like something that I have seen before? Oh, no. Ever? Okay, cool. No, no. Gotcha. None of you have seen this. Um, I'm, d- I'm not freaking out, but like I'm kind of. I'm okay. definitely on edge. What that means is is Gex starts to drift sideways. Oh, cool. So this is, uh, those of us who played a lot of 3D games or done, uh, I did a lot of QT testing for MMOs. If, you're, if your Z axis gets uh, fucked, you're sometimes characters just... You're, you're stuck yeah. in a plane. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, the rest of the party enters to see Gex kind of like, drifting like he's no longer attached to the ground properly. Yes. Fizzy yes. lifting drinks. From my perspective, yes. it looks like you're doing this, though. So. Yep. Jumping up and down. What are you doing? How are you doing yes. that? No. Um, you, you feel your feet. Hold the rope. Seriously. Otherwise, you, you look the, like you're floating off. The only Literally. person that experiences this differently is Maddox. Maddox, you see a light. He pauses for everybody who might be listening to sing over at the Frankenstein place. Uh, he sees it went light. through my head! <laughs> <laughs> no, he sees it. <laughs> You know it did. I, I, I know I, it I did. was this close, <laughs> but I'm like, how many cultural references can I weigh this thing down with? Six. Oh, Six. Okay, but I've already <laughs> spent like three of them. Oh, that's per 10 minutes. Oh, good. Uh, After so you're a long rest. rest. <laughs> yeah, long rest. Exactly. So it's over that <laughs> way. You, you my, can ref, see. my ref slots <laughs> replenish. Ex- exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you let the others know this, or do you just assume that's what they all see anyway? I wouldn't assume they didn't see it. That's fair. Yeah. Guess what does the group do? You're all kind of floating uh, around. Well, in so, what, space. Like, so what? What happens when I look down? It's there's no difference between down and up, so it's still oh, so it's just an abyss. Light. We're just sort of floating in in like like the upside down. Okay. It's it's a um, glowing cloud. It's a little more celestial than that. It's okay. the upside down was very grim and particle driven, like somebody sure. like emptying a vacuum cleaner the wrong way. Well, then what was this, that other place that Eleven was in, which was just utter blackness? Oh, uh, Dallas. <laughs> is, okay. Is, is, Dallas. Did you say doubt? Dallas. Dallas. Texas. Dallas. Yeah. Oh, no. um, uh, I think it was Deep Ellen. Like an Austinite. Uh, yeah. yeah, we don't, we don't um, like Dallas. No, that's, um, that's where my head so, is. So, so, so it's 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 like it's it's of like cloudy not. white and light. So yeah. we're in some some version of what one would call heaven. Um, it's it's more it's like sort of the uh, opening of heaven can wait. There, I just it's more like <laughs> it's more like limbo because it's, okay, it's more twilight more like than that, right? So the light you're okay. seeing is definitely brighter. Like the the kind of ambient environment is very twilighty. The light is a strong, bright light off that. Way. Okay. Gotcha, Carol Ann. All right, so we're gonna keep <laughs> heading. This towards, house uh, is keep, clean. Is clean. Uh, we're gonna keep heading towards. Uh, I'm gonna keep heading towards the light. And, and so, do I feel like Gex is make, drifting? Make a wis- make a wisdom save for me. All right. 
I did get inspiration. Do I tell you that? So that would be an eleven. No, uh, thirteen. Okay. So you discover that you start walking, and it doesn't really do anything. Your legs just kind of move, mm -hmm. but you get a good save, and you realize that you're sort of willing yourself forward. So picture somebody doing this, just kind of. Yeah. Moving, looking a little like, uh, you know how they filmed the Twilight running? If you see the effect without the movie, it's a dude on a, a, a CG rig just doing this, moving forward to the back of a truck. So it would kind of look like that, right? And you okay. realize, medics would quickly realize, it's not the physical movement of your legs. It's wanting to be that way. Like young uh, Clark and, in Donner's Superman alongside yes. the train. Uh, God, who's that actor? I liked the younger Clark. He was a comedian, I think. Uh, what was uh, your uh, Steve Gutenberg. I did get inspiration. How does how does this work? <laughs> in, in the most loving way. You lying sack of shit. I get a stinger. <laughs> Posted, I guess. Thank you um, to AJP three four. Oh, okay. Nine. Yeah. Anyone that gets one. Yes. And yeah, thanks for the call up. But go ahead and just sticker them. Oh, sweet. And you don't need to write anything on. Just put it on. It makes you the sheriff. Exciting. Okay, so we have Here our we first inspired person. And then you rip um, it off to get a reroll. Yeah, you oh, rip sweet. it off to get a reroll. Amazing. Uh, and you are now like one fortieth of the way to being properly entirely stickered. Amazing. Uh, all right. So you all see <laughs> uh, Maddox kind of flying that way. You don't see the light that he does, so it looks like he's just Maddox and is just going that way. So well, I guess Glenn that direction is as good as any. When Noomsie's jumping and jumping and trying to get places like with her body and I will say that this will be a sequence where rolling of dice will just be like we roll until you get it right. Okay. So I think it's just a montage of failed rolls until you finally make the roll of people going weird directions and trying to flap their I'm arms on, or I'm run. On, I follow. give up at some point and just let you pull. Uh, I, the rest I will of it. tug you. <laughs> I love the idea that finally yeah. the cleric is carrying her friends like balloons. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that scans completely. That, that, yep. Um, Come on, come on. So, Maddox, uh, you are closing in on something, which is very strange in this place of nothing. And the something is a little blue frog dude who's dressed in multicolored robes. Hello! <clears throat> Oi. Have you, have you seen a, a large gray cube anywhere? First, am I actually seeing you? I mean, that's really the question, right? Like, this uh, is blue yeah. to me, but for all I know, my right. blue is your red. I, what do you see? Well, we both then would agree that we're both seeing a color. Yes, I believe we can establish... I want to know, are you here... Or are you here? Can we see him? He, the rest of the party's approaching, and you see <clears throat> Maddox talking to a little blue frog wizard. Hey, little blue frog! I think, oh! Okay, well, okay good, good. <laughs> oh, you, you see the rabbit, too? Yeah, you see him? You see him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it's my mate. I, I hate to say this, but that's kind of nightmarish to my species. <laughs> what, frogs? Frogs well, I don't eat frogs. Incredibly I, muscular frogs. Incredibly uh, muscular bodies. frogs? Well, I'm, I'm all for muscular Sorry. or non-muscular. I, I do eat frogs. Oh, do you ribbit. still eat this one? Like, mm -mm. I, have you seen a big gray cube? No, nah, we're we, new here. We just got it would be here. roughly 10 meters to a side. Oh, that's big. Oh, it's big. Like we wouldn't I'm miss trying, it. I have a thing. I don't know. No. Wait, you, you've got a hat, so I'm going to assume you're the mage. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to reconnect my bag of holding. Oh, my. Oh, no. Someone used a spell and managed to sever all my magic. So one of my items stopped working and all my spells stopped working. So everything that was in my bag is is here in the ether, and I can't reconnect how, it. How did you get here? Where were you prior to these? I was in Bluff Wharf. Are you a good Bluff wizard Wharf. or a bad wizard? Bluff Wharf. Uh, I, I'm skilled. 
Do you mean that? Buffalo. Well, why should we connect? We I, 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 I think she stuff. means morally speaking. Buffalo. I believe in knowledge being the highest good, so I think technically I'm neutral lawful. I can't yeah, that's, endorse that's, that. That's that. Right. Buffalo. <laughs> Is he awful? No, not neutral. Awful. <laughs> that's 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 my brother Bill. Oh, ah. Uh, so have you Luff have Luff. you seen the inside of my bag? I've not seen yet. nothing but no. nothing here, and you. Oh, you asked how I got here. I, I'm a wizard. I used plane shift. Oh, so yes, you what, what, what was the bluff? Wharf was the plane you came from. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's I come from a place that's uh, almost entirely swamp. As you might imagine, uh, you didn't have any to write like a really concerning note that you the left. Damn the damn frogs! frogs. Uh, uh, notes? No notes. Okay. No. Uh, and, and we do have folk like you. And yes, many do. In fact, there are tribes that do. In fact, prey on us. Yeah. Uh, that's not great. Uh, your your species is unfamiliar to me. Yeah, I know. There's it's like my third favorite you, kind. And yours, all this hair. So you weren't at all surprised to sort of just bump into a party of people. Have you bumped into other people here? Generally, when when passing through the ethereal or the astral, you'll either run into horrible monsters that will beggar the imagination and drive you towards madness, or plane-shifted adventurers. We're we're in the second category. Well, I hope so. I mean, if your face becomes unleashed, unless we are your man, right, right, exactly. Well, and because Alex, uh, you have a giant rabbit and a lizard person, I'm beginning to suspect madness, but I hope not. Well, said the frog. No. Well, but to me, I'm just a person. Oh, right, but you I didn't blink when you saw a human, or a just or a, a plague doctor person. Yeah, I don't know what's under all that. I don't see any skin. I don't either, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're not a terrifying. frog. I don't believe so. <laughs> no. Can you take his mask off? Are you inclined to take your mask off? Uh, I'm curious what you look like I, under there. I take my mask off. So it is entirely a, de- a, a, a Deadpool situation. Oh, oh, like yeah. stone mouth. So okay, he's let, melty let, and scarred. He's and... all melty and scarred. Let, 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 let's put oh. that back on. Like he definitely oh, survived you poor man. more okay. than a delayed blast fireball. Like he is. A mass of scars. That's... It's also impossible to tell race or gender. Right, I was going to say it's not entirely <clears throat> clear that he was human or she or. Nope. Hey. Hey. I've had a rough go of it. I mean, the voice suggests male, but that's entirely timber. Right. So there's no telling there either. That is true. Mm. And he's. They are well, wearing layers, like you see it in the figure. They're wearing layers of like armor and like cloak. Right. It could be partially just to cover the skin, because once you do that, Maddox, you're reminded that the skin is sensitive. Like, it is scar tissue that's not completely set, so it's a little... So wearing all the stuff is to protect the skin. Let's maybe put that back on. You're you're not a frog. Nope. Maybe I was at one point. Yeah. That's got a point. Well... Anything I can do uh, to help uh, you? I, uh, otherwise, yes, I'm going to continue to seek actually, my, my um, cube. Have you seen other... On, on this go-around, have you seen others like us? Like you'd know? I saw... I think it was an ether dragon. It had two heads oh. and was massive. Oh. If I see it again, I'm going to plane shift out of here. I mean, that's yeah. fair. All right, Smart. so... We're looking for the amulet of the squared circle. Last yep. we knew, Zebrix Plainstrider had it. And he went mad, and we don't know where he is. I, I don't know what that so. item is. The, the word is not familiar to me. However, I know that Plainstrider is a title, not a name. Mm. That's for wizards that learn to travel and spend most of their time going from plane to plane. Technically... I'm a plane strider. Is your name Zebrex? It is not. It is Obo. Nice to meet you, Obo. Pleased to meet you as well. And you're... And, and forgive the, and You're what? I am an elf. an elf. My name is Gwil Willith. Well, well that's a mouthful. 
Call like me Willa. It. Like it's it. all good. It's like it's like chewing our candy. So all oh. of it. What sort of stuff around here is trying to eat the crap out of you, huh? Oh, by the way, my name is Glee Mimsy. Oh, that makes we, we, we just call forgive her this, Glee. but that makes you even more terrifying. We call it's her such Glee. an adorable name, but you, have you seen your arms? No, they're as big as mine. They're useful. Okay. Um, mostly they're uh, clouds, voracious clouds or serpent things. Clouds. Okay. Things that fly, like the, the serpent things fly through the mist, and the clouds are just hungry bits of this. Yeah, you can't hit the clouds? Well, like, these oh, creatures you can. I mean, I'd use a spell. I've not gone in with my fists. Oh, right. Uh, generally, I, I try to Banishment is weird because they come from here, but I can send them away and they come back pretty quickly. Okay. Well, that's disturbing. Clouds, check. Snakes, check. Well, we do need to get out of here at some point, I think. But first you need, we to need to find concentrate on where you want to go, and you should drift that direction. I want to go where if, the amulet if... is. I want to go where the amulet is. Let's just so, all. That all you see, the Maddox, and the only one that sees anything is Maddox. And he still hasn't mentioned that he sees anything. And he's, you still see the light. It's over that way. Uh, hey, Maddox. Well, hey, hey, hey let's just keep you. heading towards the light. Wait, light? light? What light? You see the what, frog, what? but not the light. Yeah? Almost says what light? Okay. Uh, I'm I, I'm seeing something you all know. So okay. it might be pertinent. Can Maybe possibly... you follow me. Tether ourselves to Maddox and let him pull us towards I have the a rope. So, <laughs> and yes. very excited about the rope. Since we can't see it, we can't will ourselves to head towards it. We can I'm going to will myself ourselves. to head towards Maddox. That's, that's a, also yes, true. That's we, good can call. That. So the, the elf heads our rope. If we see your box, just, we'll, just... Uh, we'll scream. But yeah. Unless you want to follow us. No, I, Do you have I like a messaging want... stone? Oh, that's sending good. Stone, it's not going to go across planes, though. Mm. Curses. Hey, Obo. What if, if you we ever need to like hang out? If you need like an adventuring party I'm member. Go. This... Oh, please, Thank you. Hi, Obo. To get it to go to you. Hi. Not across planes. Sadly. Oh, it was nice to meet you. And he Hi. drifts backwards for a while. We're drifting off towards Maddox now. So yeah, and you you hand out ropes. Rope. Yes. <laughs> well, See you later, Obo. Nice to meet you, Froggy. And uh, Sweet, the frog, like the bumping. froggy wizard, flies away. Uh, all right, up ahead. That was a nice chap. Uh, you all start to see light now. Oh. As you're starting to get a feel for your f forward progress, suddenly it does that thing you see sometimes when they uh, uh, they do uh, warp speed, mm. where you're moving forward like this and suddenly you go very quickly. Oh, cool. And you are drawn into the light. Whoa! <laughs> you emerge in a place Whoa. that has normal twilight. So there's a moon above, there are stars. Uh, you are in a lightly wooded area. Okay. Uh, and the air is different but good. So being uh, a woods, like it's got a definite like taste to it because you weren't there before and you were by the, the crater. Um, the skies are a little cloudy, cloudy and it looks like Maybe a storm menacing, so it's kind of a grim overall feeling of the place. What do you do? Oh, trees! <gasps> you literally hug a tree? Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Does it seem like we're still on the mountain? You no. definitely are not. Okay. Oh, and no, 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 in no, fact, no, 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 no. Uh, I would say that various of you, we'd have roles, but you'll compare notes. Uh, they're different stars. Oh. You're pretty sure you're not in the same Maddox, place. Maddox, after no. he's, after the, after the, the drama has gone through him, uh, and, and he's, he's discovered his LaCroix, he, he eyeballs a tree and then goes for a pee. Uh, let's take a, <laughs> let's take a five minute bio break. We're going to do them hourly. Trees. Uh, reminder to anyone Yay. listening that you can go ahead and, uh, donate to Extra Life. If you do, let us know, and we'll go ahead and inspire one of the players or me, your choice. Uh, uh, and we'll go ahead and 
five minutes. Be right back. Herb. Two. We're back. Oh, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. Uh, Emily, who was the donation from? Uh, my sister, Carolyn Holly. Go ahead and I call out, and uh, thanks so much for the donation. Yay! You see some of those uh, uh, stars, they're not sheriffs. It means they have inspiration. Uh, all right, so we're back to it. Uh, okay, so you are in a, a twilight, but again, it's... it's uh, even though the stars are different, uh, the, the forest is not like bizarre, right? It's a fairly normal, you know, uh, forest. The, the wood elf is like, well, the trees, some of the plant life is a little different, but it's not, you know, purple mushrooms and uh, tentacle trees or anything like that. That would be cool. <laughs> Says the age of fate, if you see purple mushroom, don't. Actually, don't eat anything. This is what you <laughs> Unless hear. Unless we brought it, don't eat anything. This is where you hear the scream of a little girl. Jeez. Boom. A boom means run that way fast. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, show the minis and see what the marching order is of anyone. So put the cleric first, because the first boom I heard was the cleric. In order of uh, fast response and eagerness to reach that scream, what order are we looking at? My legs are stubby and covered in blood now, so. Yeah, so probably near the back. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. All right, uh, let me get an athletics roll from the cleric, please. I've been struck by a giant. Fourteen. <laughs> okay, so tripping, which would be very embarrassing. Uh, you arrive in a small clearing. The others are right behind you. In the clearing is uh, a well, and it looks like around it, this might have been a place that had uh, maybe a small village at some point. Like you see uh, the, the ruins of a small building kind of to the side, but in the clearing, framed in the shot, it is a well. <clears throat> Standing beside the well, looking down the well, confused, is a seven-foot-tall man that looks to have been stitched together from parts. So he's he's covered in little stitch lines, and he's looking down the well as though he lost something. I'd like to prep a crossbow. Uh, so you're doing that as you run up. So yeah. as you run into the clearing, what are you doing? Getting to a halt. Just. <laughs> so go ahead and make a uh, perception roll for me. Eighteen. From down the well, you hear help. It is a little girl's voice. Coming. Who's the second in line? Okay, so uh, Bunny's there and Maddox is there. Hey, so are you walking up to the well? Uh-huh. Yeah. Excuse us. To to the so passport man. He turns to you. And very quickly, his eyes he goes into rage. Like pretty oh. much instantaneously. Oh crap! I need initiative for uh Gwyleth. Oh boy. Not I though, I'm right next to her. Nineteen. I need initiative for Kimimzi. Yes. Oh. My proficiency is added to that. Initiative for Maddox, please. Kimimzi's kind of looking around. Got got up there, listened to the stream, and all of a sudden got very distracted. <laughs> in, the, in the forest. What'd you got? Uh, five. Okay. No, no, I had six. Maddox, what you got? Eight. Eight. Oh, wait, no, I have advantage, sorry. Declare Uh Eight, thank you. I was, I was looking up. Uh, all right. Well, that's much better. 23. 
Where did the advantage come from? Uh, my advantage comes because I am uh, because of me being a bunny. Because of being a bunny. It's a rabbit thing. Mm-hmm. It's a nice. rabbit thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So give me a music. I have a nine if you want to know. Oh, I did not ask for yours or kicks this quick. <laughs> uh, so give me a music. What do you do? It looks like the big patchwork dude is gonna attack. Uh, you can see he turns on her own rage. Has, uh, <laughs> you batch him? Let the ancestors flow through me! Do you attack? Yes. Alright. Armor class is 13. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. And, uh, yeah, it's 20, 30, 20. Twice. Okay. Go ahead and do your damage. Okay. Is your weapon magic? Yes. Okay, that's important. Uh, I'm going to get my long sword. Um, let's see. Uh, nine. Okay. And I will. Oh, go. Eleven. Okay. So I use um, <coughs> green, yellow, red, meaning green is when you have most of your hit points, yellow is when you have roughly half your hit points, red is what it looks like the next blow will probably take you down. Uh, I generally don't give the hit points of a target, and I encourage you not to share your actual numbers, because we're not playing a JRPG, so numbers do not appear above your head. Um, you hit the thing with a fairly solid hit, and it is profoundly green. Oh, shit. So it kind of feels like, uh, you know in the martial arts fight, when you haul off and you hit the guy and he doesn't react, Ugh. and you cut to the, the, the person who attacked going like, oh, like it's that, that happens. Okay. Uh, Gwilith. Oh, and uh, so I've raged, and also we've got a, since I hit him, we also have a wild search. Ooh. So I'm going to re- I'm gonna roll and see what magic um, <laughs> Uh, seven. So every time you hit? Yes, when I'm in a rage. Resistance. Oh, that's... Flowers and vines temporarily grow around you until your rage ends. The ground within 15 feet of you is difficult to range from my enemies. Every hit? Thank you. While well, she's in a rage. Oh, that is rage. OP. Okay. I, I gotta read the new stuff. I always don't do that in time. Uh, rage? So actually, when I enter my rage, sorry, it's not a hit. When I enter my rage, um, if I am hit while well, that's and that's fine because that's it's only. But this that's only gonna be rage. a limited number of times. Yeah, you can see why I'm thinking like yeah, in a combat, it's like twelve magic effects. Yeah, is a lot. Uh, no, no, that's totally fine. So when you entered it, flowers <laughs> came up very, very in. On brand, I think. It's very uh, okay, Gwilith, what do you do? I'm gonna Ooh. try to get around Mr. Patchwork mm-hmm. to get to the well. Okay. Uh, so you're hoping that he's engaged enough in the combat. You're probably gonna want to hold action to see when he attacks. Oh, yes. So he engages and maybe moves away. Right. So you're gonna maneuver, but then hold the rest of the action? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I'm uh, gonna make sure he's focused on attacking her. So and I'm gonna me. go before... Maddox goes, and I will attack the big bunny. I know, I know you're, you're that's a shock, right? Yes. Here come big bunny attack. So I am not only uh, attacking with rage, I enter um, reckless attack. So I'm going to attack at advantage, and when you attack against me, you get to attack me at advantage, because I'm not paying any attention to my own defense. Uh, what's your armor class? Uh, 14. Hit just and hit. So. There we go. Ooh, that's terrible. Uh, 10 points of damage, which is damn near minimum. That's a really embarrassing roll. So he hits you, and you can tell he is about as strong as you are. Okay. So there's definitely a, like, you know, the, the two mini bosses in a martial arts fight that would, you know, poof, poof, poof. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I need an initiative from uh, Gex. Sweet. 
And from Grundir. Big five. Okay, so Maddox, you're on it. So uh, if, if uh, this flesh golem thing is engaged with the rabbit, do I get advantage on my attack? You will anyway, because he's using reckless attack. So you'll get a advantage enough, great. for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so Maddox reaches for their sword and pulls it out. And then as their hand is up like this, unbeknownst to them, Eldritch Blast just comes out of out of their hand. Just like, oh, I, I guess that's happening. <laughs> And so, <laughs> so Eldritch Blast uh, for the first attack. Again. Uh, so that is um, that is fifteen. Because uh, armor on class the first is only attack. armor class is only thirteen. Okay, so so that first attack hits, but because uh, I'm a blade master, uh, I can uh, I also get to attack. With the sword, but I'm gonna first roll the damage uh, on, the, on the Eldritch Blast, and that will be uh, that is eight uh, okay. for the Eldritch Blast, and then so it's like push this this greenish this, this black blast, but tinged with green on the outside, comes shooting forth uh, and just just broadsides this uh, this Frankenstein, and um, mm -hmm. and then uh, I swing wide with my cutlass. To, uh, to 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 close the introduction of myself into this this uh, situation, and that is uh, that is a uh, sixteen to hit with that, Definitely. and uh, the the damage uh, that is uh, so the damage for that is nine hit points of damage, and okay. then as a as a Bonus, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, Gex. What are you? Uh, what is your class? I have a 17 on the class. Oh, what is your class? Oh, sorry, I'm a I'm a rogue. You're a rogue. So yeah. I, I look behind me, and, and 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 again, my Eldritch Blast hand. I'm just very confused at it, and then it it um, it quickly uh, it spins around, and I stare right at Gex. And, and I, uh, I sing a song of Sixpence and give him bardic inspiration. <laughs> oh, wow, this matters. And I'm unaware, yeah. that I I'm, this guy. I'm unaware that I'm capable of any of this. It's just, right, it's just coming, it's just coming out of primal <laughs> instinct. Coming out of primal. Well, the sword, yeah, sword pointy stick makes thing bleed. I get that. But all of this internal uh, arcane uh, attributes are just happening uh at a gut level uh and and not unpleasing uh yeah part of what he did there like the uh elder's blast sword thing is a special ability he has not normally even possible oh, cool. so the party's looking like okay okay so that happened okay, uh, the is, yeah. yeah he's got a special ability uh so it is still profoundly green so we go to uh, Gex now. Sweet. Um, reminding me, Bardic Inspiration's a D4 I can roll. Uh, right. He is, he is I think, oh, it's a D6. D6. Yeah. A, a D6, yeah. Awesome. Um, Within 10 minutes, and I think it's to any attack, skill check, or saving throw. Okay. Yep. Um, I had already brought my crossbow up, so I think I'm just going to attack. I guess, how far away am I from... Uh, this situation. You are 23 feet 6 inches. Oh, great. That's in range. <laughs> um, and this is my plus 2 bow, so. What is it? 18 to hit? You know what the nice bow you bought in town? Because of the, uh, the generosity of uh, our. The people who donated. <laughs> what? Oh yes. <laughs> so the camera would close, close out on the beautiful bow that they, they bought for yes, you. Absolutely. Damage? Uh, damage is... Six plus two. Is this where I would add my... No, that's no, not there. I got six damage on that. And then okay. I'm going to use Eddie my... Eddie Hall, Brian's sitting right next to you, and he knows the rules. It is a uh, editor by trade, and really good at this kind of thing. I will be using your... your you could hope for no better rules, buddy. Sweet. Um, 
Still on my turn. I have crossbow expert attack, so I okay. can attack again with crossbow. So. Do it. Damn. Roll again. Do it. I dare you. And, I, and, and, and I'm spinning, and I, as I cast, and, and I see him drawing up the bow, and then I just, uh, like a well-oiled machine, make room for his hand to come up over me, uh, <laughs> and it's just over my shoulder to to shoot the crossbow. Dude, Maddox is. Dude, I, I love that. <laughs> we are, uh, so that was a 14 to hit. That's a hit. Damage, please. Sweet. And this is magic, right? It's a magic bow, yes. Yeah, six, six again. All right. Uh, not a magic bow. Yeah. Still green. Uh, then Grundir. Yes. I will cast, uh, point my wand towards the thing, who's still profoundly green, I assume? Well, he's, I, I stopped using the word profound. Like, oh, he's not just good. green. He's, <laughs> he's simply green. Merely he's, green. <laughs> yeah. That's a great band, Todd. <laughs> merely green? I love not merely green. green. <laughs> yeah. Their second album, though. They like, opened like, some white like truce, uh, <laughs> 87. So much better than tubular luggage. <laughs> Since he is standing amidst and among, amongst my companions, I will tight beam a attack rather than fireballing. I will uh, <laughs> firebolt. You fight the instinct of every wizard on the face of the earth. Yes. Oh, what's, what do you do? Fireball? No, 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 not fireball. Okay. I will, I will throw a fireball. Careful spell fireball. <laughs> this yeah. Is narrow focus. Target. Oh yeah. Get, hit God, him. God save, God save our GMs from the sorcerers. I accept my friends and I explode all the time. Did you say are all attacks against him at advantage? Uh, anything that's targeted, so yes. It is targeted. So the yeah, targeted meaning just anything you have to make it the Right, like not AoEs or Because he's not he's not ducking. He doesn't care. I have rolled twenty-four to hit. That is well and truly enough. This is fire in case he cares. Sometimes Frankenstein's get mad about fire. We'll talk. It's not a bad, it's a bad guess. I like how you racist bunch jumped to Frankenstein's. Well, I, said I, I have never said that. Is what we're against? <laughs> German? German Flash is an array. That would be a whopping four damage. Because my dice hate me. Yeah, what is he attacking so, us with? Or it I'm going to take my held action. Oh. The, the kick an ass? Yeah. Oh, my kick You do. Oh, nice. Uh, all right. So we um, go. My held action. So make a fate roll. Fate Somebody have fate dice? Is that How many of these am I rolling? Four. Four. Okay. So for the stream, I use fate dice for a lot of things. Fate dice uh, are used, they were created for the game Fate. I find them to be very good for things that are truly random. So what's your roll? Three oh, pluses, yes, one negative. Positive. So you, you reconcile the pluses and the negatives, so it's a net plus. two pluses. You tell me two pluses, two pluses is great. Fantastic. Which means the party, the creature has, has staggered. For some reason he has big boots. You know, he staggers away from the well and uh, you the well has the structure to support where you get the, the reel and the bucket. The reel no bucket, the... no reel, just mm -hmm. the thing. Cause like this is old, uh, but you look down and you see a little girl at the bottom up to her knees, there's like sludgy water, like it's not a good water source anymore, but there's some in it. And she she's crying and she waves up to you. Hold tight, I'll have you out of there in two shakes. Quick as his thorn whip, it'll do damage to her, but she'll come right up. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do damage to the child. <laughs> yeah, her arm comes off, but yeah, that's fine. I have oh. rope, I am going to tie the rope to the support. Okay, that's going to take a round. And that's then you end okay. up with the rope down. I have the no problem with doing this while they just. Give me Z. Would you like to key fight? What? Yeah. Keep. Yes. Yes, uh, absolutely. Would I like to not fight? Ah! Wait, what uh. if it's your friend and he was worried that she fell? He started fighting us. I don't know if he did. Why? Right, thinking <laughs> we were going to harm So he's yelling this for the. <laughs> He was raging because he was protective. Ask her. I mean, if you want to say something, no, ask, 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 quickly ask. So is this critter one of your friends or okay. shall we? So this can be done, but a D and D round is six seconds. Okay. Oh shit. So to get the information, he's going to go first. 
Okay. So if the party's willing to wait to see what his response is, yeah. it kicks your initiative all down below his because he has to have time to answer you. Yeah. So you yell down. What do you yell? Is this guy friend or foe? I don't know. Okay. Meanwhile, that happens and you hit. Uh, I take a swing at you. Okay. I'm attacking at advantage. Uh, yeah. Yep. But I, so I forgot to put one of my armor before. I'm 16. <laughs> Still two hits, but yeah, please yeah, remember your armor. Resist. Right. So this is going to be nine points already have. Okay. Did you already have the first one? Uh, uh no. Okay. And then this one is going to be 23, which is 12 points halved. Okay. So that's more like the damage he actually does. That first one was bad. That's terrifying. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Gimimzi, is that enough for you to keep fighting or do you want to? Oh, hell yes. Okay, roll the hit. Okay, two hits. Uh, First one hits for sure. And then the second one. As a 19, that's not quite a good point for my fighter. By the way, uh, anyone watching, this is the opportunity to do inspiration for me to make this worse for the players. Uh, what? I'm hitting it twice. Long sword. Bam. 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 Both. Uh, both magical. Perfect. Oh. So it is uh, 7 and 13. So 20 points. He is now yellow. But Yellow means he looks hurt. But it's visible that he's hurt. I'm going to secure the rope and lower myself down into the well. And you want to just grab her and come up? Yes. Okay, so if this role you be able to get down and grab her, next round you can come up. Uh, all right, and you get inspiration. So this is not bardic inspiration. Aww. This is uh, table inspiration. Um, no, yeah. just it. Just lost one of the things that I'm not super <laughs> fond about D and D is there's inspiration, which is an on and off. You're either inspired or you're not. When you use it, it gives you a reroll. We have our special reward inspiration, which is another thing, and then actual bardic inspiration, which is the third thing. And they're all inspiration, but this is the game top, which is meant to be reward. For good role playing, which is the ignore the enemy and try to get the person in danger. This is the saving dogs of the little girls prize. <laughs> so you're inspired by that, right? Because they they should be right. Uh, Gex. Sweet. Um, all right. How is this guy looking now? On the screen. Yellowish. Yellowish. Yeah, he looks not great shape. Um, I'm going to. Uh, use potent poison to poison one of my daggers. Does that uh, take a bonus action or something? This is. I think this is. I believe this. This is just like an action. I can still move after this. Um, it's just an attack. I don't know about. Oh, oh. sorry. There is a way to. to okay. This one. That's a bonus action to cook and poison. Yeah. So with my action, I want Perfect. to get up close okay. and coat poison on one of my daggers. And that's all I can do, I guess, right? So uh, how well, close can I get? So the movement is something you can do every round. The bonus action, you get one bonus action. So you can use your action to attack. Oh, okay. I, I apologize. <laughs> I will attack with my poison dagger at this point. If you're going to apologize for ignorance, you have to move out of the United States. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Might be time for me to uh, So I will roll. Todd, like your count for references, I need a per hour political drop count, like to limit me. That's a Wu Tang. That's a Wu Tang twenty right there. That's a Wu Tang. Wu Tang twenty. <laughs> it's a die not to fuck with. Yeah, um, and then when a creature takes damage from. Oh, okay. Yeah, my apologies. Again, I apologize. Not sure. Damage is just three. And remember, you're rolling. Uh, okay, now you have advantage. You can reroll that damage. What? 
I'll do that. No. It's also, if we're trying to inspire people to use my drop product. donations to replace them, it's good to use them Ooh, so yes. that those that are watching can get generous I and give you more. I only have one currently. I'm going to use my Bardic instead. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can't? Oh, yeah, you Bardic is very Yeah. So that's now seven damage. All Dire right. Strike and then Potent Poison. When a creature takes damage from Coated Weapon, the creature must exceed a DC 14 Constitution saving throw. Or take 2d8 poison damage. And he is poisoned. immune to poison. Oh, uh, cool. He's, he's a rogue. <laughs> yeah. He's fighting a target that's being attacked by he's another character. He gets sneak attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Yes. Sneak attack. Yes. I told you he was the best rules, buddy. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having an expert system. Uh, I was just good. noticing how good your background is, Todd. Plus 46. Seriously. Like, oh, respect 46. for the game layer. Yes. I am rolling 4d6 <laughs> sneak attack damage on top, yeah. on top of 7 that has already happened. Oh! oh. Ooh. And we got... Yeah, that's an actual place. Oh, god damn! That's an actual lair. 16 plus 7, uh, 23 damage. Oh, yeah. All right, 23 damage. Woo. All right. I want that head. All right. It breathes That's so smoke good. and fire. Ooh, don't, I'm all don't, Batman don't, Dutch angle now. Like don't it. say that on somebody you're dating. I mean, granted. All right. Um, Gex, solid hit. Maddox. Sick. He's immune to poison, guys. Um, um, Thanks for telling us. Though. I'm going to, I'm going to, as my, as my sword and spell, I suddenly, like, cast a head and, and and recognize that he not use words well, <laughs> but he may have thoughts. So I'm gonna go a message and go, are you trying to hurt or help the girl? He bellows, no hurt girl. Mm. So that's my cantrip. And then, uh, and then my second action, I'm going to sheathe my sword and put my hands up and walk towards him. Give me a persuade at disadvantage, please. So that, if he, was, so if he my, wasn't enraged, my second this would cantrip, be different. If he wasn't enraged, uh, so it, it's uh, persuasion at disadvantage. Okay. So that's uh, that's a six. I mean, he's you guys are too, just stabbing the crap out of him. So yeah, he's too lost in his rage. It was a good move, but he's way into the tearing the 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 ears off the bone. So I, I, I look at all of you and show you that I have my hands up and say, "He's not try. He wants to save the girl. He right. thinks Grund we're here to hurt her." Grundir. Oh, well, I won't shoot him then. How's that? So you've got like a steaming finger and you hey, never mind. <laughs> Oop, never mind. Your, uh, your book shield whispers, damn. <laughs> well, <clears throat> how deep is the child in the well then? So I think about this time, uh, uh, Willith emerges, carrying the girl under her arm. Uh -huh. Exactly that deep. Give Mimsy, you're the one kind of hand to hand with this guy. I'm going to rabbit hop. I'm bonus sketching. I can jump 15 feet without provoking opportunity attacks. So you leap kind of backwards. Yeah. So you're gonna dis you hopping disengage. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes. You make a persuasion roll at disadvantage. Huh? I make a persuasion yep, roll? Yep, at disadvantage. Okay. Ooh. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, three. Oh. Okay, both you're busy. Gex. Okay. 
The um, fight does not seem to be over because he seems too lost in rage. I'm going to use my action to disengage. Okay. And just ready another crossbow, point at his face and say, hey, stop. Stop. Perception at disadvantage? Uh, persuasion, you say? Pers- um, persuasion. Intimidate. Intimidate. Okay, gotcha. Mm. At disadvantage. Let's see if he's impressed by a crossbow point at his face. Well, Ooh, we are rolling hot. Uh, that would be a dirty 22. So, Ooh, disadvantage. Yes. Pro tip relevant to all of the excellent role playing about de, de- escalating the combat. <laughs> Brian was right when he mentioned fire. So, he's not only enraged, he's like kind of crazy from the fire. So, it wasn't a lot of damage, but it was enough to make him. Oops. I mean, you pointed out he's basically a cinematic Frankenstein. Yes. <laughs> right? And he's reacting as, and all that that implies. Uh, all right. So, at this point, I attack. So, I am going to. Uh, so, give him Z. He is going to close the attack with you, but you haven't used an action. Wait, did I not Do you intimidate wanna, him successfully? Uh, we rolled both. 22. 22. I thought you said you were being ironic. No, I said we were rolling hot. <laughs> Yeah, but I heard a bunch of fives. Oh, so I thought five? you were you were being ironic. <laughs> no, 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 no. Twenty-two. I, I rolled twenty-two. I didn't hear the twenty-two. I we're in these stupid things. <laughs> we're um, in the same room. I don't know what you're talking because about. Because <laughs> they're blocking the stuff that's not coming I know, through. I know. I know. Well, um, maybe going um, again. <laughs> you're a tiny bearded baby. Your senses aren't as good when you get older, you're Colt. Right, you're right. Um, Try maybe one off. It, you have the benefit of hair. I do. I have slippery bald head, <laughs> okay. so I really need them to sit like that. Otherwise, they just they okay. snap and yeah. That is um, so crossbow on the face. So he something deep within him remembers crossbows and pain, mm. and he sees the girl is out of the well and is going to run off into the woods. Do you let him go or do you shoot him? I'm not going to shoot at him. Ooh. Do you want me to heal you first? You're pretty sure stuff on that level of cognitive. <laughs> he's fire bad, no. girl good, crossbow <laughs> ouchie. Yes, I'm going to heal you, darling. So you let him go? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or are you, are you going to aggressively heal him? I'm going to aggressively heal him, I uh, think. Like I want to... So Let me see if any of my of healing, heals are, are... It'll be word of healing? I Otherwise do have, have healing word, it. yes. Perfect. I have revivify. You, you're That's pretty nice. sure it's not going to work on him. Revivify is somebody that just died. Fair enough. And it's he a low-level resurrection. It looks like that. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. Um, so you literally, like... You're almost like, you know, uttering vulgarities. You're like, heal, you feel better. He he kind of groans and he looks a little confused over his shoulder. Bit of a blast. But and... runs off. Uh, but you have definitely helped him. Oh, good. Uh, the little girl is still a little freaked out. Uh, so he for he's basically gone. He's, he's run away. Uh, she sobs. Okay, I'm going to hold the girl. And here, have some heels. <laughs> so how many? Let me see what I can use. That will be better than a 1d4. Because I think you need better than a 1d4. Let's go for a cure wounds, I think. Well, uh, we're not in any immediate danger now that the monster has run off. That is true. We also could, and once we deal with the girl, we might be able to take a short rest. Sure. So maybe hold off the spells for the immediate future until we find out what the girl's deal is. We'll do short resting. I like that. Potentially. I mean, I don't know if we're safe. He's writing his memoirs. She comes down. (laughs) Uh, I'm I'm actually conversing with Colt. Um, Are you okay, honey? uh, Who who was that? I don't know. I was picking flowers. How did you end up in the well then? He was playing a game where you you pull the petals off a dandelion, uh-huh. and he played two, and and I was throwing the petals in the well, okay. and and when he ran the petals, he 
He just grabbed me and he threw me in the well. Why? Oh. I guess he thought that you were a flower. I, I, Congratulations, he you're pretty. He seemed a upset. I don't. I don't think he meant to hurt me. My leg hurts though. Now let's take care of that. So she tells you that her name is Mirabelle. Uh, and she would very much like you to take her home. Absolutely, Ms. Mirabelle. Okay, you uh, help her out. Medicine rolls made, no worries. No <laughs> Rolls are for one. The outcome of an action is uncertain. Binding the wounds of a girl that fell down the well for an eighth level cleric. Easy. We can assume you got that covered. <laughs> uh, so you bind her up. Uh, you probably give her the equivalent of a splint. And uh, somebody carry her? Yes. Yes. Well, it's got to be the bunny. Will she, let, will she let the bunny carry her? The bunny? Yeah, yes. Must be. Hey, Mirabelle, you want to ride? You're a bunny. You can she, pet my tail if you want. I, I want you. Her name I, is Glee Mimsy. Glee Mimsy. I like that. I'm sorry I almost killed your friend. We got him better. That's, he was strange. I don't know. Never saw him before. Come on. Okay, so she takes you, ears, indicates so. where to go. A and, short uh, rest healing you. Right, you can go ahead and do your, your short rest. Thank goodness. And uh, no, I don't think you, you come out rest. of the wooded area uh, to the back end of the back 20 of a small farm. Uh, the farms are meager and struggling. Uh, so it's it's... It's autumn, but a lot of this either was left to die on the vine. Like, it's a farm that's not doing well. Okay. Um, and it's getting to be late afternoon at this point. It's still kind of twilighty and, and grim. Uh, and there's a farmhouse. And uh, as you're approaching, you see there is a uh, mama. She yells mama. And there is a clearly a, a farm house kind of farmer lady. At apron and all, who is literally setting a pie on the stoop. Um, and she comes running over and embraces Mirabelle. Where did you go? Did you go back to the well? Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. There's just such nice flowers there. Well, thank you for bringing her back. Oh, is she hurt? Yeah, she was. Oh, heavens. Oh. Hi, Sleepy Pleased to meet you. It's okay, Mama. She's a nice bunny. Oh, all right, all right. Ah! It's okay. It's okay. We mean no harm. There's like, there's like a lot of us in this world. Have you not seen lizard folk before? This world? We're not at home anymore. Oh. I don't. I mean, it's kind of. Odd. Where are we? None. I mean, Come on. Where are we? I thought we were just a different part of the same I, I world. I mean, you're you're story. near the Tomlinson farm. Right. I mean, the, like, what's we, this? What's this country called? Arador. Arador. And this is that is not familiar. Okay, gotcha. We, I, I don't write. None of you seem to be human. No, ma'am. Well, I have a mask on. You do not want him. Are you to take human? Off. As far as I know. I don't have a tail. Mostly, at least. No tail. Well, I mean, as far as I can tell, you're all folks from old stories. I've never seen a dwarf or a this lizard person. Elf. Elf. That's a okay. elf. What year is it? Eight twenty-three. Is that our year? I don't no. keep track. No. 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 Okay. No. That, that is no. Do you have a king or something? A duke? A regent. Mm. The king died a few years back and they haven't named new king. But in the meantime, there is a regent. Hmm. Our condolences. Oh, I don't know. So do you have any, any wizards for all these parts? Wizards? See, we are travelers from far away. We, we've come here through, through, I don't know how to describe it. To Let's just call person. it the mists. We've come from another place very far away. 
and we you probably, travelers. Our next step in our journey is to go most likely to another place equally far away. And to do such a thing, we might need to find a wizard or, or a priest or a witch or an enchanter. Or a scarecrow Th or a lion. Possibly. Yeah. <gasps> there a was, small child, but not yours. There was a st the stranger. Oh, that sounds promising. Uh, well, I mean, he came from God knows where when I was only a girl. Uh, never said where he was from properly, but my understanding was clearly not from here. And he he bought the mount the manor on the haunted hill. Ooh, that, sounds well, that doesn't sound problematic. Not at all. What so at this see? point, um, <laughs> Maddox begins to tremble. Do you remember what his name was? Wait. Maddox? Maddox? What's wrong? You good, Maddox? His, his eyes flip back. Maddox? And he drops to his knees. Oh, no, we can't lose him. He's the strongest one in the world. Uh-oh. And we are going to do a two-minute break as we switch guests. But first, I want to thank Todd Stashwick for dropping by. Thanks, Todd. Yay. Always glad to play with you, buddy. Great to see you. And uh, thanks for helping out. Again, it's all for thanks the kids. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Folks at home, and, uh, donate. Keep the train going. Yeah, we are at. We are our at, goal was a uh, thousand. We're at six twenty-five. Six twenty-five already. Nice. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. We're gonna go to brief, brief Bye. break, just long enough to switch guests. Thank you so much. Yay.